She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, and welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. We are all so very blessed that you decided to join us today. And I believe that today is gonna be a really encouraging day for you. In fact, I believe that some of the clouds that you might feel that are fogging over you are just really gonna spread apart, the beautiful sky is gonna show, the sun is gonna come through, and you're gonna be encouraged, you're gonna be uplifted, and maybe you're gonna come out of maybe some confusion and double-mindedness today. Today is that one day out of the week that we just kinda set apart, there's no commercials, we just completely focus on the best success book ever written, because when your spiritual life is a mess, everything else seems to spin out of control as well. And so today we are gonna talk about spiritual matters that are going to improve your finances. They will improve things at home as a parent or as a spouse. It will even improve your health. It will improve everything that is inside of you. So whether you find yourself today on a mountaintop or in a valley, I believe that today is going to speak something very, very powerful to you. Before I get started, let's go ahead and just have a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to open up the best success book ever written, which is the Bible. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to work with this team here as well as our friend that is listening right now. Father, I pray that you would be the one to speak. Uh, No one here is seeking the words of wisdom of man, but we are seeking your words. We are seeking your advice. We are seeking your direction. Father, I thank you that you give us the chance to come to you and we can come to your throne boldly. We can ask you of anything. We We can bear our soul before you, just as King David did, without any fear, sharing what our feelings are, even though that we might think those feelings are wrong, we can still share how we are feeling right before you. Father, I pray that you would be the one to direct today, direct the message, and speak directly into our hearts and the places where it matters. I also ask that you bless our team and bless the people, um, anyone else that is listening, whether it's YouTube, The Truth Network, or UAN. Network, Father, whichever network it is that someone is listening or on the app or on the website that that or Facebook even, that they would be incredibly blessed uh, as a direct result of what you are going to share today. In Jesus name, we ask these things. Amen. Okay, we're going to start in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse five. This particular passage is a very important passage. This passage applies to your finances, your family. It applies to your physical health. It applies to your career. It applies to everything in your life. And it happens to be something that in uh, the coaching I was doing over this past week has come up several times with several of the individuals that I had the chance to work with this week. So I I believe that you and I are supposed to have a discussion on this because I know that there might be some things going on inside of your life that you don't even realize um, that need just a tiny little tweak, a little tweak in the right direction, and how all of a sudden everything changes. So Jeremiah 17 verse 5 is where we're going to start. Okay, so, and by the way, I'm reading from um, the version, it's called the scriptures. It keeps um, God's name intact, so every place where God's name was written in the original Hebrew and or Aramaic, uh, it it shows in the, it, it actually has his name. Instead of just calling him God, instead of just calling him Lord, it, it, it which, is, which are titles, those are functions. It's like a job description, God, Lord, um, versus his name. God actually has a name, and, it, and it's the name is actually just spelled right out right here in this, in this particular version, which is why I like it. It keeps all the Hebrew names intact. So if it sounds a little different to you, you know, don't worry. It's just your, your version will say, thus said God, or thus say the Lord, is what yours might say, but this is thus say Yahweh, because that's what the actual uh, literal Hebrew says. Okay, it says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart turns away from Yahweh. Now, I have to tell you, there has been many times in my life where I thought I was walking with God, but clearly, My trust was not in him. 
Yes, I went to church. Yes, we gave to our church. Yes, we we uh, read the Bible. And yes, I prayed every day. However, the fruit that was in my life was showing that I really didn't trust him, that my trust was in man. There were times that my trust was in myself, in my ability, or my trust was in a company that I was in a contract with, um, and or it was in my own company, or it was in the economy, or my trust was in the money that I had made and how I thought that that money would always be there. I had put my trust even in my own pathetic, frail wisdom. And what was the, what was the result of that? Everything was shaking. Everything shakes when your trust is not in Yahweh. When your trust is in anything else, those everything else's is like quicksand and it's it feels unstable. I have to tell you about a time in my life um, where I thought I was trusting in God, but the reality was I was not at all. Have you ever been in that place where you were really worried about what people were saying about you and how that might affect your career or how it might affect your reputation in your family or at church or or whatever you know functions you might be involved in, some kind of sports or you know, if you are acting in the local theater or that's, you know, part of your work life, your career. But have you ever been in a place where you were really worried and even you had anxiety about what maybe people were saying about you? That actually drove me to an early retirement when I was about 30 years old and pregnant. No, 29. Wow. And pregnant with my uh, fifth child. It drove me to a place where I just completely lost sight of vision. I I was not grateful for anything. All I saw was everything that was wrong and terrible and wasn't going right. And it all had to do with one woman, just one woman with a a, a snake-like forked tongue that, you know, she used and abused. She uh, lied and stole and cheated. And with all of this lying and cheating and stealing and all this crazy manipulation, I fell under a curse because I put my trust in my reputation. I put my trust in what I thought was my good name. And here, isn't it funny that all it takes is one person to tear down your so-called good name, the reputation that you worked so hard to build. You see, when our identity is wrapped up in our reputation or what we think it is or what our perception of it is, when our identity is wrapped up in money or in business or in recognition or in our physical bodies, when our when our uh, identity is wrapped up even in our marriages or our perceived uh, idea of what marriage is supposed to be or even as a parent, when our identity is wrapped up in all of these other things, when those things come crumbling down, and they do, I want you to know that, those things do come crumbling down. Those things go through high mountain peaks to major, major valley, valleys. I mean, there are times when you can feel just on top of the world as a parent or as on top of the world in your career or with your money, on top of the world with everything in your life. And then right around the corner, there is something that just blindsides you. And today... In Jeremiah 17, we see what the result is of our trust in ourselves or in man or in strength versus our trust in Yahweh. So let's keep reading because I want to tell you about the certain season of my life where, um, yeah, that one person who, again, I had been feeling pretty darn good about myself. I'd been feeling pretty darn good about our success. I'd been feeling pretty darn good about the uh, business associations that I had. I was feeling pretty darn, I was feeling higher about myself than probably I should have. And I put my trust in all of those things. In fact, I even made this business associate almost like a savior. I even said, he's like a savior to me because of of how he rescued me. But see, it wasn't him that rescued me. It was God that rescued me. And I lost sight of that. And I began to almost idolize and put this person in a place where he clearly didn't belong. And my trust was also in him to help solve this problem between this woman who was lying, cheating, and stealing. I was depending on him to make the 
wise choice of what to do and how to handle the situation. And even like, cover me, man, cover me. You know what she's doing and saying is wrong and it's lying. And she literally is stealing and here's the proof that she is stolen from our business. But let's keep going, okay? Because this literally drove me into an early retirement. This drove me actually into a fatal heart condition. The stress and the pressure drove me into a fatal heart condition. I could not sleep at all. There was nothing physically. I couldn't walk up the stairs without passing out in our bedroom and the kids' bedrooms were all upstairs. I was passing out three to four times a day. I needed somebody else to come in and to help take care of me because why? My trust was not in Yahweh, but my trust was in man, myself, and in others. That's where my trust was. My trust was in my financial position at that time. We had just brought, bought the big dream house, which was a giant mistake. We bought a huge amount of pressure and a giant mortgage, and we bought a crazy amount of maintenance work that had to be done with this so-called dream house. What a dream. No, it was more like a nightmare. Anyway, let's keep reading. Okay, so cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart turns away from Yahweh. And again, listen, I was praying every day. I was reading the Bible. I was teaching a Bible study. I was faithfully going to church, okay? I was like so faithful to this religion, if you will, and definitely not having my trust in God. But if you would have asked me, do you have your trust in God? I probably would have said, yeah, I mean, come on, I pray. Come on, I read the Bible. Come on. You know, I, I do all the, you know, I teach a Bible study. Come on, I go to church. Yeah, of course. Of course. You see, it's not those things that determine whether or not you trust in God. Yeah. Those things actually can just be busy things. They're just activities. None of that proves whether or not you trust in God. How can we say that, right? I know you're like, what? That's blasphemy. Really? Well, Abraham didn't have a church that he went to. There was no Bible when Moses walked the earth. There was no Bible. There was no Bible studies when Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joshua, and hello, Moses, and Aaron, and Miriam. Okay, this did not, this didn't even exist when Daniel was around. Okay, when the prophet Daniel was here. No, for a thousand years, it was just spoken. There were stories that were spoken one generation to the next to the next. So there was not Bible studies. There were not Bibles. There was not, you know, uh, church functions. They, the, they just didn't exist like how we have it today, right? So, so did Abraham trust God? With everything that was in him, he trusted God. With everything that was in him, he trusted God, okay? Give me a break. He was told, bring your son to the top of Mount Moriah and I want you to slay him. And it was a test to see, do you love me and do you trust me? That was what Yahweh was asking Abraham. And it was a physical act that he was asking, do you love me? Do you trust me? Take him up to the top of the mountain. And then God sends an angel and says, do not touch your son. But now you have proven that you trust me, that you love me. Yes, now I know that I am the most important thing in your life. Okay, so so just going to, you know, listening to messages like this and you know, studying the Bible and all of that doesn't mean you trust him. No. And and so don't don't use that as your, you know, point of record of like, okay, yeah, no, I, I do. See, I do all these things. All those things are great. But do you trust him? Do you trust him? Do I trust him? Let's keep going. Verse six. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. Think about that. Can you get the picture? Can you see the shrub? It's dead. It's dead. And can you see the desert? Everything's dead, right? It's hard ground. It's rocky. It's it's cracked everywhere. There is no water. There's nothing green and alive anywhere, okay? So he says that he will be like a shrub in the desert and not see when good comes and shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and salt land that is not inhabited. Let's look at that. He will not see good when it comes. That's exactly where I was. You see, when your focus, like my focus was at this time, my focus was on one enemy, if you will, one person who had come against me, lied, cheated, stole, my focus was on that. 
And my focus was on, oh my gosh, what's going to happen if? Oh no, we are going to lose money. Oh no, we are going to lose our business. Oh no, we are going to lose our house. We're, we're going to lose our cars. Like if this thing just totally goes south, we are in so much trouble. Everything is going to be destroyed. That's what my focus is on. So I did not even see good when it came. What was the good? What is the good in your life? What are the blessings in your life? You see, when your trust is not in Yahweh, your eyes are not illuminated to see the good. And here's what it says. He cannot see the good when it comes. And that is all a focus. It's what we focus on is what we're going to get more of. And I literally came to a place at that time where here I am told I have to have a pacemaker. I'm passing out three to four times a day. I'm told that I cannot fly. I cannot travel. Okay. The high altitude is bad for the heart condition that I have. So I wouldn't be able to fly. Oh my gosh. I mean, what, talk about a massive life change that we had to move out of our house so that it was too much, too stressful to take care of it. And the elevation was too high. So we needed to move to a lower elevation that that would then help my heart not be provoked as much to where I'd pass out three to four times a day give me a break, that I needed to go on three new medications, which I was on none, but I needed to go on three new medications. The side effects of those medications would hurt my liver and my kidneys. I'm like, no, I think I'll just deal with one bad organ instead of three. So when you are like, you're backed into a corner like that, right? And how do you know if you really trust in God? Is there good around you and you cannot see it? I had spent a good portion of my life suicidal. In fact, the first time I tried to commit suicide, I was six years old. And at that time, all I could see was torment and torture and nothing ever getting better. I was riddled with fear because of the abuse as a little girl by my stepfather and my mom that didn't know what to do, didn't know how to fix that situation. All of the crazy hostility that was around. That's all I could see. And the only thing I could see out was to take my own life. This went on into well into my 20s, well into my 20s. I actually finally got completely set free and delivered of it. Yeah, June 28th of 2001, which is only, yeah, not too long ago, if you really think about it. So all the way through my 20s, I still had these battles that I was walking through. And it really came down to a few things. We all have the ability to focus. We have the ability. God gave us incredible minds, incredible minds. And where we put our minds really largely determines how we live out our life. And in this place, we see that good is around us. But when our trust is in man or in flesh or anything human, then we cannot see what is good, and therefore we're not receiving the blessing because you have something good in your life, but you can't receive the blessing because you just cannot see it. But let's keep reading on. There's a second side to this of a, an incredible promise that comes through. And I found this passage um, at that time in my life, and it helped me. Verse 7 says this, But blessed is the man who trusts in Yahweh. What does it mean to trust? It means to just fully be abandoned. It means that you really don't care what really ends up happening. It means that, well, yeah, you know what? So what if I lose my job? Yeah, so what if I lose that business? If I trust truly in my Father in heaven, then I know who my provider is, and I know that he has something set up beautifully for me. I know that I am cared for. I know that I am protected. I know that my children are protected. I know that my spouse is protected. I, I know that my reputation is nothing. What matters most is the reputation of my Savior, the reputation of my Father in heaven. That's what matters more. So I, I literally came to that place 
And I remember the breakthrough that happened in my closet. And I remember going up to my closet like five, six times a day and just crying out to God and feeling like there was just a wall. You know, and I felt like it was just this thick concrete, not wall, just ceiling that was over me. Like I felt like I had like 12 inches to just kind of be buried on the floor with and almost felt like I was suffocating and that I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm crying and I'm feeling nothing. I'm feeling like this thing is just, you know, hitting concrete that is 12 feet, you know, thick and, and right on top of me and nothing's happening. And then I came to this incredible moment, this incredible moment that I will never forget. And here it was. And I said, you know what? If I never get to feel your presence again, if I never get another answered prayer, if I never get to see another miracle move in my life or in the lives of those around me, If I never sense the illumination of your spirit when I'm reading your word and that it comes alive, that never happens again. If I never get to feel your love and I never get to feel your peace, I'm still going to show up here every day. I am still still going to show up here every day and I'm still going to talk to you as though you are listening and I am still going to teach my children about you and I am still going to talk about you because what you did for me at the cross with laying down the life of your son and your son choosing to obey and put himself on that cross that he would be a living sacrifice perfect and blameless, unblemished for my sins, that I would be cleansed of all unrighteousness, that because of what he did and how he died and how he rose again, and even as he is praying for me right now, what you, Father, did with writing that history, with setting up that system of that sacrifice for me is enough. What you did for me 2,000 years ago was enough. I don't care if you ever talk to me again. I don't care if you never let me see another miracle. I don't care if you ever illuminate your word to me again. I don't care because what you did for me, yes, what you did for me 2,000 years ago was enough. So I'm still going to talk about you. I'm still going to teach my children about you. I'm still going to seek this word. I'm still going to study. I'm still going to teach. I am still going to show up here. And I'm still going to be devoted to you and what you do. Even if you're silent until the end of my days. Something broke that day. And what broke is I didn't hear his voice. I didn't all of a sudden have an illumination of his word. Nothing happened like that. But what did happen was something changed in me. And I saw in that moment the good that was already given to me. I saw the good. I saw the blessing. I was in such a desert. I was the shrub in the desert. I was in a wasted salt land where nothing grows. That's where I was at. But in that moment, when I recognized (laughs) all of the good that I had seen, and yet here I don't have it, but what really the big blessing was, was my salvation. My salvation. What a high cost. Not only my salvation, but the cleansing and the purifying of the blood of the Messiah washing over me and cleansing me of all of my sin, that what I confess as sin, he washes me clean. It's over. It's done. It's finished. It's not to be brought up again, that there is no condemnation for those in the Messiah, that I'm completely, and you are completely cleansed, completely set free. And so in that moment, that's what came to me. It was like, yeah, I don't care if he does another thing for me. Because he already did the most amazing thing that no other human, no person, nobody could ever do for me. Nothing, I couldn't even do that for myself. So there was a pressure immediately that just came off of me. The striving stopped. And there was a trust 
there was a trust and there was like a renewal of truly my salvation of when I first met him when I was 13 and then when I rededicated my life to him when I was 23, there was a, re- a refreshing, a reviving that happened inside of my heart. And I literally got up from that floor and I went down to the kitchen. I know I was filled with joy as I focused on an incredible gift of being cleansed and purified of all of my sin and that my past was the past and that what I was currently going through was not payment for my sin, that it was life, that this is life, some of which were com- consequences for choices that I had made, you know, like the choices to focus on the woman who had lied, cheated, and stolen from us, you know, the consequences of the gigantic, almost 6,000 square foot house that we bought, the extra pressure we put on ourselves, the giant mortgage that we put on ourselves, okay, those are consequences, you know, the amount of work to clean six bathrooms and just ugh, 10 acres, and you know what I mean? Like, those were consequences of our actions, all of that pressure was consequences. But all reality, my soul was revived when I simply just confessed with my mouth, I I don't care if you ever do another thing, because what you did for me 2,000 years ago was enough. So here's what happened. And here's what will happen to you when you choose to put your trust in the only one that's trustworthy. You're not trustworthy. I'm not trustworthy. No one around us is trustworthy. Like, what are you talking about? No, I, my husband is trustworthy. No, I, mine is too. No, I'm saying this. To put all of your trust in? No way. We are human. We are frail. We make mistakes. We let people down. We mess up. That's who we are. But there's only one that does it. And that is Yahweh, your Father in heaven. He's the only one that doesn't mess up. It's amazing. So let's keep going. I'm going to read uh, verse um, 7 again. Blessed is the man or woman who trusts in Yahweh and whose trust is Yahweh. Trust is Yahweh. So it's not not only trust in Yahweh, but whose trust is Yahweh. That's like closer. You, you see what I mean? It's like your trust is in in Yahweh, okay, that's like a journey, but whose trust is, that's like you are molded together as one with him. Like there's, you're unshakable. You are completely unified, coming together as one. That's very different than I trust in him, I go to him versus I'm in him. I walk with him. This is my trust. My trust is him. Verse 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Okay, look at the difference. Look at the contrast. A shrub in the desert, a tree planted by waters, which spread out its roots by the river. Look at that. That's like always being fed, always being nourished, always being refreshed, and does not see when the heat comes. And his leaf shall be green. And in the year of drought, he is not anxious, nor does he cease from yielding fruit. Okay, so think about it. So if our trust is Yahweh, it says that we are a tree planted by the rivers and our roots spread out to the water. It spreads out to the river. Okay, that's all underground. You generally do not see the roots of a tree. And so all we see is what's on top of the ground, but we don't necessarily see what's underneath that soil. And so how do do we know who is in Yahweh? Based on our fruit in a drought season. You see this? It says because in a drought, he doesn't worry about the heat when it comes. Why? Because he has a a secret, yeah, that's happening in, in the foundations, in the depth of his soul, he's being watered, not on top of the surface, but he's being watered underneath. He's being watered, hello, because his trust is Yahweh, and it says that he will not worry in a drought, and in a drought, he doesn't cease to produce fruit. Why? Because there is a secret, hidden way that he, you, are being nourished when your trust is Yahweh. When your trust is Yahweh, then you are being nursed, even when other people don't know it, other people cannot see it. So here's what I believe is for you. Listen, listen, today, and I believe this is a promise, 
I believe that as you cross over from your trust being in man, and I just finished confessing to you just a terrible, terrible time in my life and, and uh, what horrible mistakes that I had made, you know, uh, trying to prove that I was successful in the face of this woman lying and cheating and stealing and, and being fearful of losing it all. So now I'm going to prove to everybody by buying this 6,000 square foot house. And we also moved away, you know, in this 10 acres and look at how successful we are trying to rebut with this lying, cheating stealing woman had done, right? Okay. My trust was in a CEO. Uh, my, my trust was in somebody else that I kind of created to be a savior because this person really did help my life tremendously at a time when I really, really didn't need it. Okay. But that was still no excuse. My trust is not in any human. My trust is not in any inanimate object. But if my trust is not only in Yahweh, but it is Yahweh, that my trust is him and your trust is him. Something breaks and then something flourishes. And I believe that God today is giving you a secret passageway just as you are that tree when you choose to trust him fully. That means if you trust him, there's no worry. There's no anxiety. There is no fear when you trust him. There is no but what abouts. There are no excuses either. There are, there's not, not a single excuse when your trust is Yahweh. You're immovable. You're unshakable. You are not only strong, but your strength is more than human strength when your trust is Yahweh. And you will produce fruit when others are dying. You will produce fruit while others are anxious. You will produce fruit while others are worried and fearful and filled with excuses, filled with doubt and unbelief, confusion, double-mindedness when your trust is Yahweh. Man, there's nothing, and I mean nothing like that. I can tell you I've walked through some major, major, nasty, horrible things. And as I've pressed in and really have chosen by the confession of my mouth, and really I learned it from King David in Psalms, Again and again and again, where he is saying over and over and over again, my trust is in you. Where he's saying, deliver me from your enemies. I know you see what they're, I know you see what they're doing. His confession of his mouth. I'm scared, but you are the lifter of my face. Hey, they're, they're, they're pursuing me. I know you will do something about it. If you read Psalm, that's what you see again and again. You see him in this place of distraught, yet confessing with his mouth that he knows who his help is, that he knows where his help comes from, that he knows that he's safe in the wings of Yahweh. This is what he says over and over again. And so I want, I want to ask you a question. Where are you? If you were to grade yourself on a scale of one to five on your trust, in him or your trust in yourself, where would you, where would you grade yourself? Because I believe today he's saying that whatever it is that you're walking through, you make your trust me, not trust in me, but make your trust me. Come together with me, one with me, tight with me. Like we are unbreakable. We're the threefold cord that cannot be broken. We are, we are glued together. We're walking through this together. Again, my trust is Yahweh. Not my trust is in Yahweh, but my trust is Yahweh. That takes out one step. Coming in. Do you want to bear that fruit when everybody else is in a drought? Do, do you want to have your leaves always be green and everybody going, how is this even possible? Like, come on, don't you know the economy's bad? How come you're growing? How come things are going good for you? Don't you know the economy's bad? Right? Like, can't you see the world is a mess? How come you are prospering? Do you understand? It's because of where your trust is. So you have a choice today and you got to pick it. And, and, and whether you feel it or not, just like I told you that, that night, I'm sorry, that it was in the middle of the day, that day that I'm up in my closet and I, and I feel like I'm suffocating and I feel like there's, you know, 12 foot thick of concrete that's on top of me and that God is not hearing my prayers. I don't feel anything from him. Do you understand? That, that dry, dry, dry moment. I'm not even seeing the blessings that are in my life. All I'm seeing is everything that is wrong. And here in that moment, whew, he changes everything. 
okay? It changes everything. And it was by the confession of my mouth. So I believe, yeah, with my whole heart, <laughs> that today you're gonna to make a choice and you're gonna make a good one, regardless if you feel anything happen or not means nothing. But that if your trust is him, you know you're safe. You know he's your refuge. You know he's your redeemer. You know he is your guide. You know he lights your path. You know he loves and adores you as a loving father, not some wicked, wicked man like the one that raised me, who beat me, abused me, who verbally abused me, who physically, emotionally, mentally, and sexually abused me. That stepfather of mine, he, God is not that man. My God, your God is a rescuer. He is the lifter of your face. He is the one who brings light in dark places. He is the one reaching his hand to you saying, make your trust me. Make your trust me. Dan, it's amazing. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for today's message. And I thank you for the reminder for me. I thank you that you are promising right this very minute that if we make our trust you, then you plant us near streams, that you cause our roots to spread out to the rivers, that we do not worry when the heat comes or when a drought comes because our leaves are green because of the underground way that you feed us and flourish us no matter what is happening. Father, thank you that you are true to your word. Thank you that you are not man that you would lie. Thank you that you always come through and that you are faithful. And Father, I pray that we grow our trust in you, that we are molded together in you, not just trust in you, but that our trust is you. Yeah, pull us in, Father, and we surrender our hearts to you now. We surrender all of our reputation. We surrender all of our money. We surrender all of our work. We surrender our children. We surrender our spouses. We, we surrender everything we've ever worked for. And Father, I also ask that you forgive us of putting our trust in ourselves, putting our trust in our abilities, our careers, our finances, our trust in our reputations, our trust in our government, our trust in our companies, yeah, our physical bodies, putting our trust in our own knowledge. Forgive us. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your son 2,000 years ago who was a sacrifice for that sin right there of, of trusting in everything we shouldn't trust in. Thank you for cleansing us and purifying us. Thank you for that redemption. Thank you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Messiah. I confess with my mouth that we believe that Messiah came, that he rose from the dead. Yes, seated at the right hand of you right now, interceding, praying for us. Yeah, Father, thank you for cleansing us. Thank you that he made all things new. Thank you that he renewed the covenant that you would be our God and that we would be your children. Yes. And that you would be our father, a father who trains us, a father who adores us, a father who guides us, a father who comforts us, a, a father who loves us, no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, that your love does not stop pursuing us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being one to cheer us on. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us into all righteousness and goodness. Yes. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that you have given us to just know you. Yeah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Please let us know if today's content helped you in any way. Please, and more importantly, share it with somebody else. Share it. Please share this message because someone needs this so desperately today. They're about to make a decision with their trust in the wrong place. When we make decisions when our trust is in the wrong thing, those decisions don't turn out very well. But when we make decisions when our trust is Yahweh, oh, things turn out so very well. 
doesn't mean that we're not going to have hard times. Oh, no, there's going to be hard times. Why? Because hard times are good training, they're good training, they're good development, there's good character development for us. It's important that we get trained in that way because that's how we learn and that's how we get stronger. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, please share it, whether you share it through email, Facebook, Twitter, I, whatever your social media stuff is, share this because it might save a life today. It might encourage a life today. It might bring answers today. And you were the one that made the difference because you were the one that shared it. We're going to go over the phones right now. We uh, made a post on Facebook asking if anyone had a prayer request. And so first we've got Barb Peterson from Odessa, Texas. Barb, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. How can I pray for you? It didn't open. Barb, are you muted? Hello, Barb. She's not there. She's there, but I can't hear her. Barb? We're going to have to come back to her. She must have muted her line. Okay, we have got Michelle McDonald from Nashville, Tennessee. Michelle? Yes. Hi. Yeah, hello. I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Hi. How can we pray for you? Um, I wanted to request prayer for myself and for my family, for my marriage, just trying to, to hear from God and know his purpose for everything so that we can be within his will for our lives. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. I'm just going to guide you in a prayer. Are you okay with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You know my heart. You know my heart. You know everything that's happening in my life. You know everything that's happening in my life. You know what's going on with my kids. You know what's going on with my kids. And my husband. And my husband. And you know I'm confused. And you know I'm confused, Lord. And, I, and I'm sorry. Sorry. For how we've gotten here. For how we've gotten here. I'm sorry for the mess. I'm sorry for the mess. And I thank you. And I thank you, Lord. That you are the cleaner of messes. That you are the cleaner of messes. That you make all things new. That you make all things new. Yes. I thank you that you make all things work together. <laughs> thank you that you make all things work together. For good. For good. I can't see the good right now. I can't see the good right now. But I am hoping for the good. But I am hoping for the good. And I know you know the good. And I know you know the good. And I'm sure it's far greater than anything. And I'm sure it's far greater than anything. That I could ever imagine. That I could ever imagine. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your forgiveness. And cleansing me. And cleansing me. Cleansing and purifying me. Cleansing and purifying me. That I am made new right this moment. And I am made new right this moment. Yes. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. Right now. Right now. Thank you for healing my marriage. Thank you for healing my marriage. Our finances. Our finances. And our lives. In our lives. Yes. So, Father, have your way. Father, have your way. I surrender. I surrender. I choose. I choose. To trust you. To trust you. As my father. As my father. Not the father who raised me here on earth. The father who raised me here on earth. But you, perfect father. You are a perfect father. A good father. A good father. And your ways are not my ways. Your ways are not my ways. And your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. But I want to think more like you. But I want to think more like you. And be more like you. And be more like you. So this day I give you everything. So this day I give you everything. The whole mess. The whole mess. And I trust that you know exactly what to do with it. And I trust you know exactly what to do with it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Michelle. Amen, Thank amen. You. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. I'm excited to see what he does 
in this. I am so excited to see the greater than anything you could ever imagine, hope for, expect. He is going to exceed all of that. And what and this whole thing you're walking through is going to be a story that is told that is going to help other people come out of darkness, coming out of a prison of anxiety, coming out of a prison of worry and fear, coming out of a prison of confusion. And you're going to be the vessel that helps in that situation. It's hard to imagine right now, but I just know that you're going to come out and it's going to shock you absolutely shock you. God bless you, lady. Thank you so much for calling in. We have uh, Canel or Canel from Florida. Hi. It was Canel. Hi. How are you doing, Danny? Good. How can I pray for you today? Um, I, I need prayers for my decision making mm-hmm. and to finally break through in business. And, and also, you know, I have a secret sin that you know i've been struggling with okay. in the night season if you know what i mean yeah so yeah that's what i need prayers for well i just love your transparency and i really respect you for calling in and and wanting to deal with this i think you're awesome thank you thank that's that's true humility right there which is true strength it really oh. is that that's that's real right there <laughs> That is absolute real. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. All right. I'm going to lead you in the prayer, okay? Okay. Okay, say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You know my name. You know my name. You know where I live. You know where I live. You know what I do. You know what I do. You know my thoughts. You know my thoughts. 24-7. 24-7. You know my struggles. You know my struggles. You know my pain. You know my pain. You know my failures. You know my failures. And my successes. And my successes. You know what I'm good at. You know what I'm good at. And you know where I'm weak. And you know where I'm weak. And you choose. And you choose. To love me. To love me. To accept me. To accept me. And to receive me. And to receive me. As your son. As your son. This is a shock. This is a shock. How can it be? How can it be? That you, the king of the universe. That you, the king of the universe. Would delight. Would delight. In someone like me. In someone like me. You know where I'm struggling this very minute. You know where I'm struggling this very minute. And God, I need you. God, I need you. I don't want to fail here anymore. I don't want to fail here anymore. I don't want to fail in business. I don't want to fail in business. I don't want to fail in sin. I don't want to fail in sin. And I can't do it on my own. And I can't do it on my own. So I confess my sin to you. So I confess my sin to you. And I know it's wrong. And I know it's wrong. And how I've treated my business. And how I've treated my business. And other things in my life. And other things in my life. Father, and I leave it before your throne. Father, I leave it before your throne. And you said. And you said. That if I confess my sins. That if I confess my sins. Then I would be healed. And I will be healed. I would be set free and delivered. I will be set free and delivered. So I am expecting this moment. So I'm expecting this moment. To be that moment. To be that moment. I give you my business. I give you my business. I give you all of my talents. I give all of my talents. My abilities. My abilities. My money. My money. My reputation and my time. My reputation and my time. I give it all to you now. I give it all to you now. And I ask that you have your way with it. And I ask that you have your way with it. Mold me into the man. Mold me into the man. You made me to be. You made me to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Let me, uh, I want to keep praying for you. Father, in the name of Yeshua, your son, Jesus, I lift up my brother right now before you. Father, I thank you for the humility and transparency that is in him. You just heard the confession of his mouth. And I know, Father, that he knows you. I know that he knows that he can come to you. Um, Father, I thank you for your, the cleansing blood of the Messiah washing over him right this very minute. I thank you for the cleansing and purifying, that there's no spot, no blemish at all from this this nighttime sin, uh, this, this hidden thing. Um, Father, and even whatever sin is happening in the business, Father, that we've all done, that we've all been there. Um, I just praise you, Father, for how many times Times you, as I've confessed my sin before you, you have forgiven me. That's the promise that you give to every single one of us. Father, I pray that he feels the cleansing right now, the cleansing power of the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, coming over him right this very minute, that he can feel the washing of that cleansing water, like the basin that was in the tabernacle, that he's being completely purified right this minute with no spot, no blemish at all, uh, and no tie to the past and no tie to the sin and no tie to any habits. In fact, right now, in the name of Yeshua that has authority over all evil, we come against, yes, that temptation uh, and buckling under the temptation. We break that right now, the provoker. We break the provoker in the name of Jesus. I also come against a spirit of sorcery. Um, Yeah, I come against a spirit of witchcraft in Jesus' name and idolatry. Idolatry, sorcery, um, also insubordination. I break the powers right now through the blood of Jesus who gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That which is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven and loosed, uh, bound on earth is bound in heaven. And we know that these are bound right now. So I bind sorcery, witchcraft, insubordination, rebellion in Jesus' name. Uh, Walking in the places where we know we shouldn't walk. I break that path right now to not be returned. I break the silver cord attached to the provoker, attached to that secret sin. We break the spirit of perversion right now in Jesus' name. No bowing down in any way, shape, or form. Father, I also uh, break off of his eyes the spirit of blindness, heaviness, and bondage right now in Jesus' name. That he will see, he will see the breadcrumbs that were put out before him that leads him into the secret place. And that he would see those and curse and rebuke those right now. In fact, I ask that you remove every seed that has been planted by the enemy in which he has ingested that he has received. And we break those powers right now in Jesus' name. Father, I also loosen over my brother peace that passes all understanding. Fill him now with your power. Fill him now with your Holy Spirit that brings life and peace and righteousness. Father, let him crave that which is righteous. Let him crave peace. Let him crave, Father, your love. Let him crave patience. Let him crave understanding. Let him crave your wisdom. Let him crave Let him be provoked, Father, by self-control, that he can see the work of the enemy in front of him and just goes, not today, sucker, go back to hell where you belong. Father, we praise you, we praise you, praise you for your word, we praise you for your power, we praise you for your spirit, we praise you for the fruit of your spirit, we praise you for your discernment uh, that is is being laid over my brother right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Keneal. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Yes. Okay, we've got uh, Chinwei from Nigeria. Welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. How can we pray for you? (laughs) Is there something wrong with line three? Hello, Chinwei. Yes, hello. Yes. Hello. Yay, it's open. <laughs> okay. Well, hello all the way from Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful to have you. How can we pray for you? Well, yeah, um, I've been struggling with a couple of things lately. Um, I just uh, resigned from my job after three and a half years. Okay. And right about now, I'm not doing anything. I just feel a lot of, um, I just feel lost, really. Because mm-hmm. I don't really know what next to do with myself. And mm-hmm. um, my relationship with God has been a bit, uh, been a bit, um, I don't know, I can't really say. You know, I just find it difficult to actually talk to him. And then when I do, I just feel like he's not, 
hearing me or he's yes. not listening. I don't know. Yes. And then um, I was engaged this year and um, a lot of things have also happened in that area. You know, mm. a lot of things have just happened in that area. Um, my fiancé was kidnapped in February. He was held for three weeks. And um, wow. and since then, a lot of things have really happened. But uh, like, it just feels like my marital destiny keeps being delayed, mm. uh, you know. So yeah. I just put God's intervention in that area as well and his yes. feet. And, yes. you know, just... Majorly, his breakthrough all round. Yes. Okay. Let's pray. This is awesome. Mm. Because I really sense and believe that your breakthrough is on its way today. Yeah. Let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You know how I feel. You know how I feel. You know that I feel like my destiny is being pushed off. You know that I feel like my destiny is being off. You know that I feel like you don't hear me. You know that I feel like you don't hear me. That you don't want to hear me. That you don't want to hear me. That you're leaving me alone. That you're leaving me alone. I feel abandoned by you. I feel abandoned by you. And I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to feel this way anymore. And I confess, I confess that I shouldn't feel this way. That I shouldn't feel this But you already know my thoughts. But you already know my thoughts. You've already searched my heart. You have already searched my heart. And you know I'm angry with you. You know I'm angry with you. Yeah. But you still love me. But you still love me. You still adore me. You still adore me. And even though I feel like you don't hear me. And even though I feel like you don't hear me. I stand on the truth. I stand on the truth. That you are not deaf. That you are not deaf. And that your arm is not too short. And that your arm is not too short. And that you are my God. And that you are my God. And I am your daughter. And I am your daughter. And that you will not forsake. And if you... You will not me, forsake. And that you will not forsake. Your daughter. Your daughter. So regardless of how I feel... Sorry? So regardless of how I feel... Regardless of how I feel... The truth is... The truth is... What it is... So I choose to trust. So I choose to trust today. Today. That you. That you are going to fight for me. Are going to fight for me. And you will fight for my fiance. And you will fight for my fiance. And you will fight for my destiny. And you will fight for me. No matter what comes my way. No matter what comes to my you are my deliverer. You are my deliverer. My redeemer. My redeemer. My savior. My savior. And there's no one else I should trust in. And there's no one else I should trust in. So I confess with my mouth today. So I confess with my mouth today. You are my God. You are my God. I'm your daughter. I'm your daughter. And I am safe with you. And I am safe with you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me just keep praying for a minute here. Father, I thank you so much for Chin Wei. I thank you, Father, that, that you have brought her here today. I pray that you bring great revelation of Jeremiah 17, 5 through 12 in her life, as well as the book of Psalms, Psalms 23. Father, that she gets a great revelation, that she confesses with her mouth who you are, regardless of how she feels, that she commands her feelings to line up with the truth. And as she does that, Father, that you bless her, bless her, bless her in Jesus' Jesus name. Amen. Well, that's all for us today. God bless you. We pray that today was a blessing to you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. 
This has been The Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted.